Welcome to worship on October 11th, 2020. Glad that you're joining us in this online forum to praise God. Uh, by this time, the quilts have been packed up and likely delivered to Elgin, quilts and kits, numbering 277 quilts and a bunch of uh, kits and other blankets. We thank those who did the laying out and also the packing as well as all of the sewing and then finally the delivery. We look forward to celebrating this fall time of year with beautiful quilts again next year. Uh, our last outdoor worship service was likely last week on October 4th as the weather begins to turn more unpredictable and colder. So for the time being, you'll see us come to you uh, virtually only um, with analog, meaning face-to-face -face opportunities for Bible study and youth activities and uh, other pieces during the course of the week. We're working right now on the early versions of figuring out how to do effective streaming for worship, and we pray that as that research and team building is done, we find solutions to be able to wor worship in person again, and uh, there's no timetable set for that right now, um, but know that work is being done to that end. We're glad to worship with you uh, in the safety of your home or your car or maybe even out at a park with headphones on. Um, from here around the world um, in different states in the country and uh, we're just glad you're joining us today. We know that God is present in this place. Let's worship. Hey. 
Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, whose steadfast love is everlasting, whose faithfulness endures from generation to generation. Amen. Trusting in the God of mercy, let us confess our sin. Reconciling God, we confess that we do not trust your abundance and we deny your presence in our lives. We place our hope in ourselves and rely on our own efforts. We fail to believe that you provide enough for all. We abuse your good creation for our own benefit. We fear difference and we do not welcome others as you have welcomed us. We sin in thought, word, and deed. By your grace, forgive us. Through your love, renew us. And in your spirit, lead us so that we may live and serve you in newness of life. Amen. Beloved God, by the radical abundance of divine mercy, we have peace through God and Jesus Christ, through whom we have obtained grace upon grace. Our sins are forgiven. Let us live now in hope. For hope does not disappoint, because God's love has been poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all, and also with you. Let us pray. Lord of the feast, you've prepared a table before all peoples and poured out your life with abundance. Call us again to your banquet. Strengthen us by what is honorable, just, and pure, and transform us into a people of righteousness and peace. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, Amen. A reading from Philippians chapter 4. I urge Eudoia and I urge Sintichi to be of the same mind in the Lord. Yes, 
And I ask you also, my loyal companion, help these women, for they have struggled beside me in the work of the gospel, together with Clement and the rest of my co-workers, whose names are in the book of life. Rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I will say, rejoice. Let your gentleness be known to everyone. The Lord is near. Do not worry about anything, but in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Finally, beloved, whatever is true, whatever is honorable, whatever is just, whatever is pure, whatever is pleasing, whatever is commendable, if there is any excellence and if there is anything worthy of praise, think about these things. Keep on doing the things that you have learned and received and heard and seen in me, and the God of peace will be with you. The Word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Sleep in 
Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. Once more, Jesus spoke to them in parables, saying, The kingdom of heaven may be compared to a king who gave a wedding banquet for his son. He sent his slaves to call those who had been invited to the wedding banquet, but they would not come. Again, he sent other slaves, saying, Tell those who had been invited, Look, I have prepared my dinner. My oxen and my fat calves have been slaughtered and everything is ready. Come to the wedding banquet. But they made light of it and went away, one to his farm and another to his business, while the rest seized his slaves, mistreated them and killed them. The king was enraged. He sent his troops, destroyed those murderers and burned their cities. Then he said to his slaves, the wedding is ready, but those who were invited were not worthy. Go, therefore, into the main streets and invite everyone you find to the wedding banquet. Those slaves went out into the streets and gathered all whom they found, both the good and the bad. So the wedding hall was filled with guests. But when the king came in to see the guests, he noticed a man there who was not wearing a wedding robe. And he said to him, Friend, how did you get in here without a wedding robe? And he was speechless. Then the king said to the attendant, Bind him hand and foot and throw him into the outer darkness where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. For many are called, but few are chosen. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Hey everyone, it's good to see you today. I'm glad that you're here. I was wondering if you have ever been handed one of these or seen one of these come to you in the mail. Yeah, what is that for? Why do you usually get those? Right, those are for birthday parties. Are birthday parties fun? Yeah. What types of things do you do at birthday parties? Yeah. Sometimes you get to go to jump places or bounce houses. Sometimes you even get to go to your friend's house and have party there. All sorts of fun things happen, right? Yeah. And today's gospel text from the Bible, Jesus is saying that a king was having a party. Now, do you think it's going to be a big party if a king is throwing a party? Yeah, that's going to be huge, right? Yeah, and he invites all these people, and guess what? None of them show up. Can you believe it? A huge party like what a king would throw, and none of the people showed up. But 
Sometimes do you get invited to a party and you can't go? Yeah, it happens sometimes, right? Sometimes you want to go and do something, but there are other plans and you just can't go. Sometimes your parents have to go somewhere. Sometimes you're not around. Sometimes your brother or your sister have something going on and you have to do that instead. Right. So sometimes you just can't go even though you're invited. But Jesus is telling us today about a huge party that he is getting ready for us right now up in heaven. And it's going to be bigger than the biggest party you have ever been to. And Jesus is saying, I'm inviting you. You all get an invitation to my party. Will you come join me? And we all should say, yes, that is one super party that Jesus is planning for us. So let's pray. And you can repeat after me. Dear Jesus, thank you for inviting us to your big party. Help us live each day in joyful celebration. We love you, Jesus. Amen. Thanks for spending some time with me. Have a good week, everyone. Will you pray with me? Gracious God, we ask that you plant that seed of faith deep in our hearts, water it with your word, nourish it with your Son, and let your light shine upon it, and let it come to fruition however you see fit. Amen. In our gospel text today, a uh, king is throwing a huge party for his son, as in a wedding party, and calling his friends and pretty much everybody he knows around town. In Jesus' day, there are, and there were, RSVPs just like there are today. If you said yes to the invitation, then that means that the individual would need to prep for food and accommodations and all those other things, just like today. So in essence, not much has changed in the last 2,000 years as far as wedding preparation goes. And it's surprising that the king sent out messengers to tell them and everybody to get ready to come. Until you think about it, they didn't necessarily know exactly when two o'clock was in the afternoon. So they would send out these messengers to grab everybody and say, all right, the party's started, come on in. So he sends out these messengers and invites them to come now that the party is ready, but he waits and he waits and no one shows up. So then he sends out his messengers again and says, no, really, I'm for real. The party is getting ready to start. Come on over. I've got so much food and so much entertainment. This party is going to be a blast. Come on to my party for my son. And he waits and no one shows up. And this time, though, they ignore him and choose other options instead of attending the party. Some even attack his messengers, and some kill the messengers. All these are allusions to what will happen to Jesus shortly. There's even an allusion, as the gospel story continues, to the destruction of the temple and the fire and the destruction of the city itself, which Matthew's hearers, for those he wrote the letter to, would actually understand and incorporate that into their understanding of the story as well. Now the frustrated king invites anyone who would celebrate with him, desperate because he's got this huge party and nobody is showing up. So since his closest friends won't come, he's going to invite not only the good, but also the bad, it says in scriptures, which means all of the tax collectors, the soldiers, Romans, People who do shady things in the middle of the night, and even the foreigners are invited to this party. And the parable says that they were invited to God's table. Now this would have shocked the Jewish community of the day and the hearers of this word, and they would get them thinking about what Jesus 
had said to them. Now the king and guests are enjoying the party until the king makes his way around and notices someone who doesn't have his wedding robe on. After a discussion, he is tossed out. If both the good and the bad are invited, though, why is this man tossed out? Was he a wedding crasher, perhaps? Did he forget his robe at home that day? Clearly, he's not like the others wearing the robe. So why was this man tossed out? I've heard this story many times and heard it explained in many different ways. Some had said that he was not clean and tidy like the others. Perhaps he didn't believe like the others did. But, but what if there is more to this story than what we see on the surface? Perhaps a different angle. I recently read an article that changed my interpretation of this gospel text, and I wanted to share it with you. In this story, a chaplain in a jail held weekly Bible study time for the inmates. He had a few regulars, and once in a while, someone new would join them. One time, an inmate named Jerry heard the gospel story at this Bible study session, and it touched him deeply. He wanted others to hear what he heard. Now, gang leaders have a gift for recruitment. They excel at gathering the unwanted and the unreachable. They can recruit better than most of us. I picked up the chaplain's paraphrase story here. The entire upper tier, minus the old guy who refused, now emptied into our Sunday circle with eager interest, all responding to Jerry's means of persuasion. I saw more than bullying in Jerry. I saw raw dynamic of an apostolic growth. Jerry begins to explain the Bible passage that we just read and how it impacted him. So, he says, the king sends out more of his messengers to the streets. He's looking for more people, right? Jerry was now out of his chair with the Bible in his hand, ready to act out this scene to his cohort. He continues, So Jesus, I mean the king or, or whatever, is throwing this gangster party, but he's all rejected by the people with money who, I guess, have better things to do. But he doesn't want to have a party and nobody comes, so he invites the street people. See, people like me, we know we're all bad people, and we know where they are, all the bad people are at. So, we got to be the ones to go and invite them, right? I'm your messenger, right here. There's a lot of us out there. I mean, if the king really wants this house to be full, I'll help him find them. I mean, it makes sense, doesn't it? If we're at the party having a good time with the king, then there would be less of us out there on the street stealing cars and stereos, Right? You see, that story stirred my soul four separate times as I heard it. Hearing this gospel text from a different person's perspective that I simply cannot relate to or even think of from his perspective shook my core. Suddenly, I'm the one that's not wearing the robe. I'm the one who needs to assess my own life. Martin Luther says that if that gospel text doesn't stir our hearts, then we need to reevaluate it. Turn our assumptions upside down. Make us pause and think. And hopefully that thinking will lead to change. This story has given us much to think about, knowing that God welcomes us all to the banquet, even those like Jerry in the prison system, those who struggle in daily life, and those who seem to have it all together. We are washed clean in the waves of God's mercy, and the invitation has already been extended and affirmed through the waters of holy baptism. So may we be changed by that invitation and that this gospel text and the story that that jail chaplain shared with us changed our lives 
so that we can live joyfully, sharing Christ's love in word and service to the world. Amen.
Let us now join together in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Gracious host, fill your church with a spirit of joyous hospitality. We pray for bishops Curry and Eaton, and all our bishops, teachers, church leaders, and all children of God, as they invite others to your table of boundless grace. Gracious host, as creation waits with eager longing for redemption, protect your creatures that are mistreated. Restore valleys, watersheds, prairies, and running waters. Be with those in the path of wildfires in the northwest and those affected by tropical storms in the south and all around the world. Gracious host, as you set a table in the presence of enemies, so bless the efforts of diplomats, international peace workers, and world leaders who navigate conflict. May they proceed with dialogue and understanding so that justice and peace prevails. Lord, in your mercy. Gracious host, let your gentleness be known among those who are weary or ill, especially those we name now either aloud or in our hearts. Strengthen doctors, medical care workers, and caretakers who see to their needs. Gracious host, when we are quick to judge outward appearances, remind us how you clothe us all in your mercy. We pray for ministries that provide needed clothing and other personal care assistance in this community, especially those who deliver and receive the quilts made by our quilters. Gracious host, as we remember those who have died and are gathered at heavenly banquet, comfort us with your presence and assure us of your peace at all times. Lord, in your mercy. Listen as we call on you, O God, and enfold us in your loving arms, for whom we pray, in the name of Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Now is the time of worship when, in person, we would have received gifts in the offering plate. Um, but even before COVID, there have been a wide array of opportunities to give back to God through your finances, whether it be a check in the mail, a gift from an endowment, or a charitable trust fund, the gift of stock, um, just stopping by church and making a gift, um, 
lots of different ways to give. We have online ways to give um, through um, checking account withdrawals or through credit card, as well as text to give and PayPal. So lots of different uh, venues to be able to um, share resources so that we can continue our ministries here and not just survive, but thrive and do well in the course of this pandemic so that we can worship God together, praise God together, learn about God together, and also serve our brothers and sisters in our wider uh, Lake County community and around the world. So thank you for your generous gifts. Um, you all are wonderfully committed to our ministry together, and we thank you for that. Let us pray. God of goodness and growth, all creation is yours, and your faithfulness is as firm as the heavens. Water and word, wine and bread, these are signs of your abundant grace. Nourish us through these gifts that we might proclaim your steadfast love in our communities and in the world. Through Jesus Christ, our strength and our song. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. On the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples to eat, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took a cup and gave thanks and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Before you now is the same communion which you picked up earlier this week, the same body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, given for you. We ask you to pause the video now while you commune and remind anyone present that this is the body of Christ broken for you, and this is the blood of Christ shed for you. Let us pray. God of the welcome table, in this meal we have feasted on your goodness and have been united by your presence among us. Empower us to go forth satisfied by these gifts so that we may share your neighborly love with all through Jesus Christ, the giver of abundant life. Amen. Receive this blessing. Neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor rulers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor anything in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God and Jesus Christ. God the Creator, Jesus the Christ, and the Holy Spirit, the Comforter, bless you and keep you in eternal love. Amen. Counsels guide uphold you with a shepherd's care and fold you. God be with you till we meet again. God be with you till we meet again. Holy wings securely. Till we 
at Jesus' feet till we meet, till we meet. God be with you till we meet again. Till we meet again When life's perils that confound you Put unfailing arms around you God be with you till we meet again Till we meet Jesus' feet till we meet, till we meet. God be with you till we meet again, till we meet, till we meet, till we meet at Jesus' Jesus meet till we meet till we meet God be with you God be with you God be with you till we Be at peace and tell everyone what you have heard. Thanks be to God. We are so blessed to announce that our Grace Service Workshop team has created 277 quilts, 37 educational kits, 15 sewing kits, and 16 layettes for distribution to those in need through Lutheran World Relief. This has been a record-setting year with twice as, more than twice as many quilts as ever before. What an awesome gift God has given to us to be so caring and industrious in this difficult time. We pray for the hands that made these pieces and those that will receive these gifts of love and care and much needed warmth. May these be used in your service and become blessings for all those who receive them. O oh Lord, we know that all we possess comes from your loving hand. Give us grace to honor you with all of our being. Draw our hearts to you. Guide our minds. Fill our imaginations. Control our wills so that we may be wholly yours. Use us as you will, always to your glory and the welfare of your people. Amen. Let us pray. O oh Lord our God, maker of all things, you have blessed us with so many gifts. A good eye for color, the ability to make fine stitches, the skills to develop ever new and exciting patterns. Now we offer the fruits of our labors, the quilts, kits, and layettes we have made to you. We dedicate these quilts, kits, and layettes to your service, trusting that your love will go wherever each item is sent, making it more than just a piece of material, a collection of items, making each piece we have created an expression of love. There is no way for us to imagine the power and effect 
an act of love can have on a person's life. How you can use something as small as a quilt, a layout, a kit, to radiate your love from us to the world.